All right. I don't know how long this is going to take, but this is kind of a new deal of an old deal that I used to do. And I got asked to do this one in Atlanta about three weeks ago. So it's kind of fresh material. And it's a defensive coordinator's in-season guide. And as Chris says, um, I've been a head coach now for a long time, 30 years. I've coached on both sides of the ball. Um, I'm the head coach at Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. We're a small class B school, about 700 kids, 300 boys um, in the nor northern suburbs of Detroit. And a lot of our kids are two-way players and kind of everything we do and our coordination is based off of that. So what I want to start off with is our weekly, is our weekly schedule. And I just sort of want to talk about what's important to me and why I do things. And we'll move on from there as we start coordinating through the week. Saturday morning, what I do is Friday night, I get home and I cut up some video cuts, our biggest plays of the night, and I put them on Twitter, try to build a little enthusiasm and have all sorts of fun with that. And, you know, I'll have go out, grab a burger and maybe a beer with, a, with one of my guys, but we don't live all close to each other. So I'll kind of go home. And we have a certain amount of things we need to do on Saturdays. And I think this is what's important on Saturday morning. When you watch film and we break down ourselves first on Saturday morning. And what I'm looking for is effort, technique, and how we are on critical downs. How do we play third downs? How do we play red zone defense? And those are important things to me. And if things break down on third down, why did they break down? Why, you know, we had trouble? Why were we successful in the red zone? And I send a review of our defense out and I try to get it, you know, all done. And I send that review up to the players and I, and I do my markups, meaning my notes on the film. And I send a PowerPoint to my players and I send my film notes by 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Um, I think it's important you take a day off. Saturday is my day off. I love college football. We've got a lot of great college football around us. So I want to go watch some college football. And the other thing we do is, as a staff, we mark up our scout film for the following week. And that's all we do on Saturday. We review our previous game, we close the chapter on that week, and we start breaking down the huddle film collectively. Sunday's a little bit different deal. It's a big work day. It's a big work day for us. I set times and goals, <clears throat> and I get up at 6.30, and I, I type out my weekly calendar for the team, um, what our objectives are, where we're going to be, what our time schedules are. I communicate with the parents. At 7 a.m., I study the scout film. And to me, I think personnel formation and plays grouped together are really important. And then we take that personnel formation and plays, and I like to see where they're at the top of the red zone, where they're at the bottom of the red zone. What do they like to do for series starters? What do they do on first down? And what do they do on the money downs of third and short and third and long and third and regular? And I think that's really important. I think you can't. I don't have the time to break down everything, okay? But if I can break down red zone, top and bottom, series starters, first down, and third down, short, regular, and long, and group those by personnel, I got a pretty good idea how I'm going to have to defend them. And then what I like to do is I like to take what I think is going to be my game plan and I board it. And what that means, I put it on my game plan board. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. And I put everything down there and I start getting ideas, you know, in my mind on what we're going to do. And at noon, my staff comes over. That should be meeting, not metering. Sorry. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we have to fix on our own and our offense, our defense, and our kicking game. And then we got to review our depth chart on the offense and the defense of the kicking game. And then I present my, my defensive game plan, all right, and our practice goals for the week. Our offensive coordinator presents the offensive game plan and the emphasis for the week. And then I change everything on him. And then we conclude about four o'clock. Sunday night, okay, five o'clock, I want to do my practice schedules for the week, my breakdowns. I want to complete the scout cards. At eight o'clock, I want to create the defensive game plan and scouting report, and I want to get it to the players. And I want to get it to the players hopefully by 10 o'clock. 
And at 10 o'clock, I, I plug my, my computer onto the TV and I go turd fishing. And what I'm looking for are matchups. I'm looking turds and you know in, in protection. I'm looking for weak protections. I'm looking for bad schemes. I'm looking for fraudulent corners if they're two tight ends. I'm looking for the I'm looking for the imposter tight end, and I'm looking for matchups that we can take advantage of on third and long and in in red zone. Midnight, I'm going to bed. Hopefully, I know you offensive guys. You all look pretty. Hang out with your sweater vests and your visors, and y'all go to bed early. But you know. It's midnight on Sunday, and if I'm going to bed, then I'm feeling good. It never happens. It's usually 1 o'clock. Okay, when we break down film, okay, there's a couple things I want to talk about that I think are really important. When you, when you filter your stuff, we talk about different zones, okay? The black zone is backed up. It's 20 yards to the, to the opponent's goal line. I think that people call plays differently. I call that the black zone. And the regular is what I call everything from their 20 to their, their 50. And I call it regular opponent. You know, I, I say this because I'm not very smart with the plus and minus bullshit. Is it plus we have the balls at minus when we have the ball, but I coach on both sides of the ball. So if I say, you know, we're playing, let's say we're playing our friends at Dearborn divine child. All right. If, if they're on the divine child, 30 yard line, I don't know where the ball is. So we put down regular, you know, our opponents, you know, 30 yard line. And then we have our side of the field regular, which is from the 50 to the 20. And then the 20 to the 10 is the top. And the, you know, it's 20 to the, excuse me, the 15 is the top, the 15 to the five is the bottom of the red zone, and the goal line. That's how we break up, break up our zones. Here's our emphasis on down and distance. Um, personnel groups. Um, I think you want to really take a look at a couple things. Do they provide you a, a different look and down and distance with a different personnel group? That can give you some great tendencies. All right. Do they have specificity of formation? There's certain things they're going to do in certain formations and certain groups. You want to make sure you get those down. When certain players are matched together, what, what happens with those groups? And the last thing is we want to know what all the TDs, all the big plays, and all the two-point plays are. And these are things we want to really focus on when we filter down on the huddle film. Once again, what I'm looking for, personnel, formations, series, plays. What, you know, one of the things is, you know, a lot of you guys haven't been around as long as I have. But when I broke in, wing T football was huge. And everything was series-related. You know, it was, it was, you know, buck sweep, trap, and waggle. It was speed sweep, speed trap, and, and bootleg. It was belly, belly counter, you know, belly keep pass. And when you have plays that are, are formation-based, series-based together, we tried to teach them as those groups. And then we want to see how those groups work in each of these critical situations. These are the areas that we want to really talk about. Red zone. Series starters, first and first and ten. I want to talk about first and ten a little bit. You know, I hear the offensive guys about staying on rhythm and staying on pace and staying on schedule. Screw their ass. Go after them on first down. Change their 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 schedule. Okay, they want to be second and three. Good. How does second and twelve feel to you today? All right. How does how does second and thirteen feel to you? Second 11, that feel good? All right, we want that. We want to win on first down. We used to play a lot of coverage on first down. Now it's a lot of zone pressure. You know, we're even thinking about bringing some, some different concepts out there. Not going to talk about them tonight, but some first down concepts where, you know what, we're going to make it play a little bit more aggressive. And when we do that, we think we can, we can lead and stay on top of things for a while. All right, third down is where the money is. You know, you got to know those tendencies. Game plan board. All right, here's my game plan board. It's just sitting right next to me now. Back when I was at Milford and I had a little bit more money to spend, I had two boards or three boards, one for offense, one for defense, and one for special teams. But I put these two on the same board because I'm a little short on cash and this is down in my basement. And what I like to do is I like to put the personnel groups the formations, the runs, the play action, the dropbacks, and other things, most frequent three personnel groups. 
And then I'll put down my coverages, my zone pressures, you know, my man pressures, my dime package, and then I work straight down the side. And when I talk about building the game plan, I just fill it in. Looks like this normally, and then there's the one side of it. I just fill it in so that I got an idea what I'm looking at, and when my guys come in, they can look at it too. And we do that on the offensive side too, and it lets everybody know what we're doing and how we're trying to defend somebody. And what you're looking at right now is a mock-up from our week three opponent from last year. I just took pictures of it and, and held it because I'm an idiot. Um, so I take this information, and then what I want to do is I want to publish something in, in PowerPoint. And um, what I want to do is here's, here's what I send out to the kids. And I like to put a picture on it. And, you know, it's just a basic scouting report of what they do and what we're looking to do to defend it in different ways. And this, this, this comes out to my kids every night by, by 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. And I ask them, you better have an idea by the time we get to practice what's, what's going on in the game plan. If you can nerd yourself out at our school, and we're, we have nerds at our place, you can make a half hour to take a look at this. All right. And the first thing I do, it's a narrative. It's just, I'm speaking. I talk a little bit about our opponents. Okay. Um, I, I, I tell them what I think. I tell them who I think their best players are. Um, I think they, you know, what they're good at, what they're not good at, what they're, what are they formation tendency? Are they down a distance tendency? And what I do, I just type that out to my kids and it's just an observation report. Okay. Then Okay, what I like to do is I set up priorities for our defense. And this was recognize formation and align perfectly. All right, communicate with each other. I'd be willing to bet if we, if you saw the last 10 years of these things, somewhere in the course of time it, during priorities for the defense, it'll say recognize formation and align perfectly, communicate with each other because it's the key to defense. You know, they have a history of being a wing T school and, and everything to them, I think, and what they do is, is trying to attack the flanks, get us out flanks, flank. So we want to support the edge. We want to play the bubble screams with leverage, okay? Um, we thought they were going to attack our, our weak side spur because everybody else did. And, you know, we talked about because they wanted to pass the ball, we wanted to really pressure and it had to get home. We had to emphasize that getting there, getting there at the point of release so they could get an eight-yard gain on his own, his own pressure is unacceptable. And good teams play good defense because they tackle. And we didn't tackle real well in the first two weeks. And we wanted to make a statement about tackling. And then I talk about their, um, um, their group. And whoever's, you know, whoever is, you know, what I thought of them, you know. Um, and I always try to give them credit, but, you know, I just call it as I see it with their, with their personnel groups. And I thought they had a very good skill personnel group. And I thought the quarterback was very good. Um, so I wanted to make sure I thought our guy's really good. And I said, you know, quarterback makes plays like our guy. I think when you can compare kids to your kids, they understand. Um, and then I talked about their personnel groups and the plays they like to run with it. And then I, I, I work my way through that. And then I have these other formations, other formations on what they tried to do. And then I drew it all, I draw it all out. And when I draw it out, I draw out our motion and where we want our kids to be. And here's all 10 personnel. Here's 11 personnel. You know, we get tips for our kids in here. And as we go on to this scouting report, I wanna make it easy for the kids, but I wanna give them information Okay, on what's going to happen. Here's pair boogie where they line up in a wing to the boundary and they bring them over to an unbalanced edge. Okay, I, I want our kids to understand what they're trying to do in alignment. We need to, on that first day, my goal is to line up perfectly. I want to line up perfectly. I want to make sure our fits are perfect because we don't have a lot of time on day one. All right, I want to talk to them how we want to play the bunch, how we want to play unbalanced. Okay, then I show them their run games. And one thing that I've learned now with this computer program I have 
is if I draw these plays out, then I can just use them later for my scout cards. And so if I do a good job of drawing them and put them in, I can two for one it. And I think that's important because you want to utilize time and you want to do things right. And as I draw out their offense, all right, I want to make sure our kids understand what they do best. All right. And then I put down two things. So I'm kind of running out of gas at the end of the night. I, you know, I, I, okay, when they go under center, it's sneak. And anything that was fourth down was a long count. So I threw that in under two things. And then I put in their passing game, and they threw the ball quite a bit, and that was going to be what they were going to go to. And, you know, some of their sprint out concepts. And then I put in our calls. And I put in our calls. And this is not lock solid. But pretty much, this is where we're going to start the week at. And usually one coverage leaves, and usually one zone pressure I don't like, and it comes out, and one dime defense comes out. So this is our starting point at the start of the week. I send this to my kids at 8 o'clock on Sunday nights, and they all look at it. We're not allowed to meet on Sunday night. The archbishop says we don't do that, so we, we send it to our kids. <clears throat> Weekly schedule and script. I think you got to understand what you got, okay? And we're not a two platoon football team. So you got to figure out what's important and where your emphasis has to be. So these are actual practice schedules and things that we want to do. And I think the first thing you want to do when you organize your practice is practice, your practice reps should mirror the tendencies of the offensive breakdown. If they're throwing the ball 60 or 50% of the time, then 50% of your, your, your practice plan should be versus the pass. If you're seeing an inside run and they're inside run plays, they're inside zone read 30% of the time, then 30% of your snaps should be zone read. Your tendencies in the practice should match the tendencies on the field, okay? Also in practice, you want to really note when you want to rotate players. Because this is where I screw up. When I don't do this, you know, all of a sudden we're looking at Thursday and no one's got any reps. You want to take time to do it the right way. You want to take time to rotate kids in. It doesn't always work the way you want, but you want to organize it so you're ready to go. The last thing is you want to create your scout team prior to practice. And this year we're going to post it. You know, I, you know, sometimes kids get all hurt when they're on the scout teams and stuff like that. But you know what? Everybody knows where they're at and it just works best. Create your scout teams and then post it. And then I think this is the most important thing we do during the course of the week is technique at the weakness points. And let me tell you what that means. In every defense, we have a structural weakness. When we play field 51, we know that we're going to have a, a bubble in the A gap and we're going to have a bubble on the opposite B. We know that if you can throw the field side hitch, it's hard to get under. And we know that everybody wants to go after the man side somehow. All right, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. They want to throw at your slot. Or they want to throw, they want to throw a slot fade at your, your, your spur and man coverage. They want to run shallow cross and bring it back. They run run, they want to run quarterback power or speed option into the boundary. They want to go into the boundary with you. And what we talk to about our kids is this: there are certain places people want to attack us. And at those structural weaknesses of our defense, we have to be great at technique. The best way I can describe that is in the old days when we play wing T football, we knew that we're structurally weak in the front side A. And so we had to play trap better than everybody else. Well, you know what? We got to be better at playing shallow cross into the boundary than anybody else. All right. Because last year we got attacked there for the first time in a long time. We got to be better at that with technique. So that becomes a strength of our de defense. And I think that's really important is that you put that in when you organize your practice. On Monday, we have something called an accountability meeting. It's called Accountability Monday. We don't have a whole lot of time on Monday because the soccer kids start a game and we only have the one field. So we got to get out there quick. And basically, they come down and I tell them what went wrong, you know. 
And if you're winning, you can do accountability Monday. You know, I start off right away and I'll say, Coach Fox screwed up a third and long call, should have brought pressure, played coverage, I screwed it up. And then I'll say something like, you know, Alex Whalen had tailback away on the man side, shallow cross back to him, did not play the shallow crosser. All right, didn't play it the right way. Offensively, left tackle didn't get in a stance properly for three quarters. And I'm just brutally honest. And it's accountability Monday, and the kids know it's coming. Accountability Monday. Accountability Monday. I'll see the kids in the hallway. I'll say, you know what today is? And they go, oh, yeah, baby, accountability Monday. They know it's coming. And we just make sure everybody knows what's going on. All right? Then I talk about what we're going to do in our base stuff versus their base stuff. How we're going to line up, how we're going to play it. And I only get two, two segments. I get a segment of alignment and assignment, and I get a segment of team. Alignment and assignment is kind of like team for us, all right? And we sort of film that segment of team, all right? And then our defensive meetings, we go over blitz install, best plays, best formation. And then we take a look at our alignment and fits from that day. <clears throat> and that's all we do. If you look at our practice sheet on Monday, all right? And that is it, man. It is period two, alignment and assignment, which is sort of like team. And then way down here. And everything else is offense. Everything else is offense. All right. On Tuesday, it's base defense versus base offense. There's two periods individual that includes tackling. There's one small group, which is like a key and fit period. We have a segment of team run, which we film. We have a segment of, of Skelly, and we have one segment of team blitz, which I love to film when we can. Same with third and long. I think this team blitz is, is huge for us. We're a big zone pressure team, and team blitz is all our six-man zone pressure stuff. And what we do in our six-man zone pressure during team blitz, and I love this drill, is we work on the things that are hardest for us to defend. So we basically go against, you know, a center, four trash cans, and all the skilled kids we have. And we work on basically three things. We work on bubble screens or tunnel screens. We work on four verticals. And we work on quick game. And what we're doing is on our six-man zone pressures, we're working with the magic droppers, make sure we're fitting the right way. And when the ball comes out, it is run and fit. It is run and fit. When they go four verticals, are we jamming the seam? Are we making the ball extend down the field? And everybody turns and runs. It's an unbelievable drill to help us with what we do. And I think third and long is the most important down on defense. And basically, there's very little offense on Tuesday. There's very little offense on Tuesday. Wednesday's base defense versus base offense. We have a segment of team run. We have a segment of Skelly. We have a segment of team blitz and a third down period. And so it's split 50-50. That's Wednesday. Where we make up some time is on Thursday. Thursday is not a walkthrough off the field in 45 minutes day to us. All right, it is a work day. We're out there about 90 minutes to two hours. We have a segment of team run. We have a segment of Skelly. We got a segment of team blitz and a third long period. And we want to always talk about these things because that's what's important. And we do, Friday is work day for us. And you know, we're out there for a significant amount of time. We just don't have time in our situation to put more in earlier in the day or earlier in the week, and then come back and catch it. All right? Now, here's my scripts. And this is a script from Wednesday. And one thing I'll tell you, we never flip back to a card. We make a new card for everything that's script. If not, it just takes too damn long. <clears throat> and then what I want to do is I want to make sure that everything's scripted and everything's ready to go because I can't stand it if, oh, I'm looking for card 18D. Okay, well, I don't give a shit. You know, I just want, I want the cards in order the right way or I go nuts, okay, or I go nuts. All right, now, weekly game plan, okay? Some things we want to make sure we do. Number one, you need to teach your kids how you're going to play the base run in your base plays. 
And I think we've done a really good job at this. I think we got away from it for a while. We've gone back to it. It really helps. What is their best run play? Who's responsible for stopping the direction of the ball? So let's say, you know, uh, what, what, I, got a dumb, I got a diagram on this. Who's responsible for when the ball is spilled and how do we, how do we pursue and fit properly? I think you need to talk about that. I heard that somebody talked about triangle fit with the spurs and the free safeties today earlier. That's exactly what we're talking about. But when we start to break things down, uh, you know, when the balls are like, if someone's an old school eye formation, they're running off the tackle, who's responsible for changing the direction of the spur is? All right. When the ball changes direction, who fronts the ball? That'd be the backer and the free safety. And when the ball escapes out, how does everybody fit? Those are things we want to teach our kids. Okay. Um, how do we how do we play their best class, pass plays? How do we contain the quarterback? How do we match our coverages to routes? So let's, let's take a look here. So let's say we're playing a team that's a big power read team with with jet motion. Okay. I think when you break this down, it's a form of option football. And you have to understand who are they blocking, who are they blocking your support player with, and who are they blocking your alley player. And I've always believed, just like with option football, you better have a player inside the load block of the halfback and outside the load block of the halfback. So this guy comes in motion and we bounce, we spin down, we treat this as two in the backfield. And the first thing we tell our spur is this, if they give the ball, you cannot let that ball cross your face. You are responsing, responsible for changing the direction of the ball. Now, inside, when this guy steps down, it's a lot harder to talk this part through. My defensive end will step and square. We call it we call it a blood a blood call where he's going to come down and as his shoulder squares his eyes are in the backfield his eyes are in the backfield if they run zone read he's the quarterback player if they run power read he's the quarterback player the key is not to get too deep the key is not to give up the quarterback underneath our backers bounce, the backer is under the load block, and when the slot engages the spur, the free safety can come in outside the load block. My corner is an outside contain, my spur will fold on the backside, and my corner is in deep chase, and my mic has quarterback cut back, the end will chase from behind. We'll tell our kids, who's got to stop the direction of the ball if the quarterback keeps it? It's the stud. All right. If he gives the ball, who's got to stop the direction of the ball? It's the spur. When the ball changes direction, who's got the ball when it's in the alley? It's free safety and backer. You fit backside, you chase, you're down the line, you're fold, you're deep fold, you're outside contained. We teach them how to play their best plays. Give them their assignments. Somebody has to stop the direction of the ball. Someone's got to front the ball. And who's going to fit it when it escapes? So here we are. Here's shallow cross. Okay. This seems like where people are going at us with a lot of things. Okay. Here's what's basically happening. Okay. If he, the key is the mic backer. This is our man side here. Here's our man side here. They're going to run my corner off, and they're going to take the the they're going to take the slot down to ten and bring him in. My spur is going to to come underneath. My free safety gets a shallow read, so he doubles on the dig. My backer drops. My spur buzzes the flat or a half read. My mic is on the on the opposite side. And what's happened with him in the past is when the tailback goes away, he, he has to he has this guy man if he comes to this side. But if he flares or he comes this way and he disappears, he's got the next man under, which is this guy here. And if our kid does it right, as he's coming across, he should engage him and he should take that away. And that's how we want to play that. And we teach our kids it doesn't always work. If they run, if they run the shallow mesh, our wolf won't chase that. He'll pass it over to the zone coverage and then he'll cut too. So that's how we play the, the, the boundary side versus shallow cross. 
and we want to teach our kids how to play it. And I really think just like the run, if we tell them how to fit it, then they know what we're looking for. Then they know what we're looking for. And if we can take our base defense versus their best plays, we have a great concept on how to stop them. My in-game call sheet, you know, I want to create, I want to create a balance call sheet. And I think when you create your game plan, you got to decide what you want. And sometimes this has got me jacked up. And I want to, I want to talk about this in a minute. I really believe that if you're going into a dog fight, you should have 33% of your defense be some form of coverage. 33% of your defense should be some form of zone pressure. And 33% of your defense should be a man pressure. And I really believe this more than ever. We got in a game where we played great defense and we played great defense for three quarters. We turned the ball over a couple times. And then all of a sudden they got out and we had a hard time slowing down. And I didn't have other things to go to. And it was my fault. Okay. And what happened is I needed to be in my dime front more. I needed to be in my dime front more. And all I had was my man pressures. So we ended up in base coverage and man pressures from dime. I think that's bad. I think you got to have 33% of your base defense be coverage, 33% of be zone pressures, and 33%, you know, be man pressures. We're playing with this move concept, okay, where I really think it's going to help us a little bit. And, you know, 33% of our, our move stuff should be a coverage, and 33% of our zone pressure should be a, a, a zone, or 33% of our move front should be zone pressure, and 33% of our stuff should be a man pressure. That doesn't mean equal calls. That means you would call these equally and same with our dime. And I think that helps you. Okay. Thoughts and game planning down in the um, game planning. I think you want to really attack what they do based on down distance. And one of the things that we've started to do is we try to match up formations and tendencies with our best calls. Okay, we use a multiple thing that we call choice. And if you come out and you're in 10 personnel and maybe you're a maybe you're a three by one, two by two team, but when you're two by two, you have a specific tendency. We want to be in a specific call. And if you get out of this, we want to be in another. What we're trying to do is win on first down, all right, and get ahead of the sticks. And we play second down just based on down and distance tendency. And then we try to win on third down. And what I'm going to tell you is in third long, we're going to bring pressure or we're going to show pressure and we're going to make you think we're heating your ass up. That's what we do. Uh, third medium, we use multiple choice calls, to try to get the matchups that we want. And in short, we attack your tendencies. Okay, we're very blade heavy. Okay, so let's talk about this. It's first down. We're going to use a zone pressure to try to get ahead of the sticks. All right. The first thing is this. We'll call choice. And what we have is two different zone pressures. All right. If they're one back, we want to run a blade away from the tailback. This team that, that we use this against that you're going to see, they were a one back. Uh, when they were one back, all right, they did not run their quarterback very much. They ran a lot of stretch, and what we want to do is bring the blade to where they were running the ball. If the quarterback was a runner, maybe we would put the blade away. We would put the blade to the tailback, all right? And if they got in two back, we would go to a double, a double, a double edge start we call psycho. And I don't know if you guys are going to see this. Okay, they're three by one. And what's going to happen is we're going to bring the blade call over here. We're going to bring the blade call over here because this guy doesn't run the ball. We slid down to a zone pressure. Okay, there's our blade. He's bringing pass, and we get the sack. You know, just kind of a tendency breakdown based on field position, or field position, personnel, and down and distance. Sorry, the band's playing. Yeah, you guys have all been locked up for days. Who the hell cares? Let the band play, right? And... So here we go again, same type of a deal. There's our blade call. They run the ball, and they run their zone screen right in the blade, which is really hard to, to run. 
All right. And, you know, now that was a big play on third down. We're just trying to win. We're just trying to win and get ahead of the sticks. All right. So now, now they're in two by two. And when they were in two by two, they were big. They were a big, you know, run tendency team off tackle. So we thought we'd just bring our edge stuff and play man like we did in the 90s. And there we go. They have problem with the mesh and we do okay. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to get matchups. We're trying to get matchups. Now, in-game adjustments are half times, okay, or other. I, I would prefer to make adjustments before halftime. Hell, you don't make them before that. You might be done as it is. You might be done as, as it is. So what we do is the one thing is if you're going to make a personnel thing, you got to show the personnel on film to the kid, okay, because kids think they're always doing it right. You got huddle there. You can show them right there. Hey, dude, they're right, okay? And the first thing we do is when we look at the film, when we make decisions, is we start here. Are we aligned right? If we're not aligned right, show them on the film on the board. Tell them exactly what you want him to do and how to correct it, okay? We start with alignment. Are we aligned right? Are we using the, tech, the, the proper technique? Show them on the film. You're not bending underneath that enough. The trap's coming out, uh, off too much. Okay. All right. Number two is do not make decisions on emotion. If it's a scheme issue, change your call. All right. Some things you have to anticipate. If they're wearing you out in 51, go to 52. If they're hurting you in field defense, move. Okay. Play some move eagle. Change your, your, your change what you're doing. Change what you're doing sooner than later. Okay. So then the question is this, well, you know, they're better than we are. Well, sometimes people are better than you are, and sometimes kids are playing with more emotion, and sometimes they have momentum. So what can you do, all right? And I'd like to start small and work big, all right? We can create movement with the line, both pre-snap stem and post-snap with some movement, okay? Use a zone pressure. Add a guy, um, add a guy to the box, and on first down you gotta roll dice and go attack them, so you get ahead of the sticks. So you get ahead of the sticks. And lastly, what you're seeing is my game plan. Okay, is my game plan. I know you can't see a real good picture of it, but I wanted you to see, you know, all of it. Here's my down and distance calls. All right, here's my corrections. Here's my two minute defense. And that's kind of how I do it. Now, Chris, that's all I got to share on game planning. If you got some questions or something like that, I'll be happy to, to talk to you guys. And then, you know, I'll let you go back to watching who, you know, five hours of how Tom Brady's affecting the NFL and who gives a shit because he's 44 years old. All right. You there, Chris? Yeah, I'm here. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, the first thing is somebody's asking you um, what your contact information is. Can you put that up there? Yeah. What's good is I can put this up here. Nobody emails me right now because nobody's emailing, right? My email's got more shit in it than it's ever had in its life. Yeah, you better be careful. We have some, uh, some of Brady's high school friends in here. Seriously. Who's high school friends? Tom Brady. Nice. Yeah, Mike Perotti, who's a friend of mine out, he's at Hillsdale High School. He uh well that's outstanding. That I think he went to high school. Okay. Dude, that means that guy's ready to retire from coaching. Yeah. He's ready. Uh, I'll, I'll ask some of these questions we got in here. Uh um, right there's my email, Chris. Beautiful. And, can, and, and it's at his Twitter it handles at P E F G D. You want to type that in there coach too? Yeah. I got to just look it up. Cause I'm not very good with this. <laughs> you guys have been banging on it. I'm appreciate that. I'm almost up to like 2000 P or thousand peeps. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, You got a bump when you did the podcast, by the way, coach Fox and I did a podcast. Um, 
You can find it uh, if you go to coachvast.com. There's a podcast link. Um, it has all the shows I've done. I think it was one of the first Make Defense Great Again shows. Um, you can see. I followed there. Don Brown. I remember that. That's right. Because you want me to talk about cross defending the crossing routes. Yes. Yes. He actually agreed to come on again, so I'm fired up about that. When are you coming on again? There I am. Keep coming in, fellas. Get me to 2,000. Uh, come on, coaches. Any questions on there, coach? Uh, yeah, so as the head coach and defensive coordinator, this is from Joe Lato, L-A-T-O. Uh, as the head coach and defensive coordinator, how involved are you with the offensive game plan? I don't know if you heard the first part of it where I said the offensive coordinator presents the offensive game plan and then I change it. Um, <laughs> that is how it goes. I coach offensive line. Everything comes through me. There you go. Um, the next question is, um, what program are you using to create your PowerPoint game plan? That's uh, Playmaker Pro. Playmaker Pro from my guy over there in Ann Arbor, and I just I just copy and paste onto the PowerPoint. There you go. And then you can shade stuff with the shapes. It's pretty sweet. Um, when you talked about your base offense versus base defense, does that mean you're working your scheme on both sides or just for scout O and D? Good point. Their base, their base offense versus our base defense. Gotcha. Um, next question from Gavin Freilich and your friend and mine and Patreon subscriber. I think he was actually the first one. Um, for your choice calls, how many do you take into a week? Just two, or does it depend on how many personnel groups slash formations that you see? Depends how smart my kids are. You know, I got to be honest with you. I got, I got two inside linebackers who have a combined ACT of like 66, 67, and a GPA of like 8.3. So I can put a lot on their plate. And so we, we usually carry two or three. But you said they're combined. You said SAT. You ACT. meant ACT? Yeah. I thought you were making a joke because you said no, 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 no. My kids' SAT my, score was sixty-seven. <laughs> I, I want like, you to know our average ACT score at Notre Dame Prep is twenty-nine. Got it. Okay. When the Fox girls graduate, might be down there around twenty-three. <clears throat> okay. Common. Um. What? What? Uh, let's see. What zone are you playing behind your pressures? I don't know if you already. Um, we, we we play a we play a, we play a six man uh, pressure concept where we're three deep two under with magic droppers. We have one zone pressure where we're three deep three under, and then the rest of them are are man pressures. Um, we have some off man concept we call goosebumps, which has been fantastic for us. We do play some press. Gotcha. Um. What is Crazy Ivan in evil coverage? Huh. Um, crazy Ivan is, you know, we play split coverage, which is 51. And when people go three into the three by one in the boundaries, we'll play Crazy Ivan. And Crazy Ivan is 15. We'll, 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 we'll spin to the boundary to their three receivers and play man on the, to the field. We don't always do it, but it's a starting point. And evil. Guys, I think. Oh, Evil is, uh, is read coverage to three by one, spinning the weak side spur down. Another question we have, uh, how do you tie your choice calls together? Do you already answer that? Yeah. Well, we just, okay. we just try to, we just try to, you know, if they're, if, if I see a uh, two really high tendencies, first and 10 out of like 10 personnel and first and 10 out of 11 personnel, and I got a call for each, I will, I will like tag. I will tag what I want to see it versus something, and then anything else will play something else. And you know that's how we do it. Um, uh, Coach Bird said he stepped away for a second. What is the blade call? Isn't that just a guy coming off the edge? A uh, guy comes off the edge. The B gap player picks the. Picks the tackle, the C gap defender loops into the A gap. The backside tackle goes from A to B, and the backside 
back her blitzes from depth into the A-gap. Uh, Anthony Pryor, I skipped your question. I, what, uh, what was it? You might have already answered it. If I skipped it, it's because he answered it, I think. Or where, where? Oh, how do you exactly break down film? Well, that was, we, that was kind of the whole presentation. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I would, so, I would say this, concentrate on the money downs. Try to group yeah. things by personnel groups. That's how we do it. Uh, uh, how about my friend Jeff Whelan down here? Jeff is the Whelan. Move, yeah. Is the move front concept the same as it's always been? No, it's new, Jeff, and you better get to the basement this summer. Oh, I want to. I want to know. Are we going to be allowed to go outside? Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I I'm anticipating it. The governor of Michigan says we can golf at least. Um. Uh, what are uh, Charles Wheeler? What are what are a few of your favorite reports to run on Huddle on the weekends? I don't run a ton of reports. I just kind of look at things and then I come back and study the film. You know, back in the old days, we, we literally, you know, used to cut film with scissors and glue and it helped you group things together because you saw them. And I think sometimes the tendency stuff, um, sometimes I think the tendency stuff blinds you to the rhythm of the game. And so I, I spend a lot of time just looking at stuff and then double checking to make sure it works. So I don't run a ton of programs. Coach Penta once he says, Coach, you're very experienced at this point in your career. How often do you look at your sheet during the games? Depends how we're doing. Uh, I'm, uh, the better we do, the more the, the less I look at it. The more I, the more you know. If I'm looking at that back page where my corrections are that's when we're in trouble. You know, I, um, I try to get the guy up top, you know, when, when your guy up top is ahead of you and he's looking at the sheet and he's in your ear and he's saying it's third and three, Pat, <clears throat> you want choice or you want Mike blade or you want field 52. Um, if they get him in your head, that, that helps the best. That helps me the best. All right. Um, hey, this Walter Boslavich here. Is this is this like my old my old pal from Walt Wally, whose dad was the AD of the Catholic League? Hi, Coach Fox. Thought the thought thoughts on bluffing blitz and showing pressure versus blitz from depth. I Dude, I, I like that concept. We don't do it enough. We just kind of show it and or we I guess we bluff. I guess that's the best way to say it, Coach Baslevich. Because I'm starting to see. Um, Sean Hopper from Atavis. Do you ever have any coaches on your staff double check what you review for you, or do they attack their own responsibilities? In terms of what? Game planning, probably tag and film. Yeah, we all tag film together. Um, I got a couple guys that tell me I'm full of shit. Yeah, and I think you need those guys. You know, I think we need coach, to... coach, somebody said they tried to email you and it bounced back. Let me see. Is it at, is it Pat Fox at, let me see. At N Fox at N D N D N. Oh, oops. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Well, I screwed you guys up. Okay. Hold on. Somewhere I just lost a slide. Dewan Johnson, he prefers the four two five because he's been doing it forever. Yeah, that's me. Uh, we have more questions that we have time to answer, so I'm going to yeah. end on this one. Somebody wants to know what is turd fishing again on your. Well, you're looking for a lousy player or a bad scheme. You know, I think that's when you're turd fishing. You know, you're trying to find that matchup. You know. You're trying to find that matchup where you can get your best pass rusher on their weakest player 
or you're trying to find, you know, I like the guys that, I like the guys that turn their center and try to get the half back on my best blitzers. And so what I'm, what I first do when I turn fish is I try to find out if they're a slide protection, which way they turn the center in relationship to the tailbacks alignment. Gotcha. And those type of things. One last question. Uh, can you explain the magic dropper a little more? Are they running with a vertical or more of a reroute technique? They're going to, they're going to jam that seam to 16. We're not giving up four verticals. You know, we're not giving it up. You know, I know some people let it off sooner. We, we carry it a little bit further. We carry it a little bit further, but you know, the whole magic dropper things are like an hour conversation in itself. But, you know, I think, um, I think you got to be really heavy handed with those kids and you got to reroute them because if they're trying to go four verticals versus six man pressure, if you reroute them, they're going to have to go outside with the ball or they're going to get hit. Totally. Um, and then I'm going to answer this last question before I let you go.